Previously, we saw how to compute the probability of exactly k successes in n trials of a binomial distribution where the probability of a success was p and the probability of failure was q. In this video, I want to look at how you calculate the expected number of successes in n trials, which is just really just the, the mean of the, the distribution. Now, textbooks give a, a really uh, simple formula for this. Uh, it's usually called the expected value of x, and it's given by the formula n times p. So, for example, if you have a, a situation where you know that you have a production line where you have, say, uh, the probability of defectives, 2% of the items are defective, and you go through and you randomly select uh, 100 of these and you uh, check them whether or not they're defective or not, you would expect to find uh, exactly 0 0.02 times 100 or uh, two defective items uh, in the list. Uh, or if you did an experiment where you were going to uh, roll a die, uh, you would expect maybe to get the number uh, six would come up, or one or any such number would come up one sixth of the time. So supposing you uh, rolled a die uh, 30 times, then what would be the expected uh, number of ones, for example. Well, it would be 30 times, and the probability of getting a one would be one six. So you would expect to have uh, five uh, ones in, in the list. Okay, so that's how you calculate this. Now, how do we actually get this formula here from the way you calculate mean? Well, let's look at the probability distribution here. So if we have a certain number of uh, the outcomes here are going to be numbers 1, oops, 0, 1, 2, well, all the way down to, to n. And what would be the probability of exactly uh, k successes here? Well, uh, this is, well, just write down the formula. It's going to be a combination of n things to 0 at a time. Uh, times uh, p to the 0, q to the n minus 0. The next would be combinations of n choose 1, p to the first power, q to the n minus 1, etc. I don't want to do too many more of these. Uh, p squared, q to the n minus 2, all the way down the list until the probability of the last one occurring combination to n choose n. Now, we know how to simplify some of these, so uh, I won't do that uh, right away. Now, how do we find the mean or the expected value of this? Well, how do we, what do we do? Well, what we have to do is we look at the outcomes here, and we have to multiply each outcome by the probability of that outcome occurring. Well, so there's a general formula, if I write it, it would be the sum of uh, k times the, well, combinations of n things choose k at a time, p to the k, q to the n minus k, and we'd sum this from a 0 to n here. Now, how on earth does this formula reduce down to this n times p? Well, hopefully that's what we'll see in the next uh, minute or two. Okay, so let's sort of write this thing out so I can see it in a little more detail. It's gonna be kind of gory here though. All right, so what happens if I multiply zero times this? Well, let's just drop that and write that as zero because I don't wanna to, have to write too many things down. The next I get one times this term, so this is gonna be combinations of n choose. Well, let's actually write it, uh, write it, in using the factorial notation. Okay, so this would be n factorial divided by n minus one factorial. Okay, and then this is going to be uh, p to the first p to the first power times uh, q 
to the n minus 1 power plus. Now what happens the next one? It's going to be uh, n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial. I see I left off the factorial here times 2 factorial. Now this is then going to be multiplied by 2 because it's the second one here. And this will be p squared times the q to the n minus 2. Okay, so I want to keep on doing this until I get to the last one. Okay, so it's going to be n factorial over what? n minus n, so that's 0 factorial over uh, uh, n factorial, n minus 0. And this will then be multiplied by n, because we're at the very last one down here, times uh, p to the what? n times q to the 0. Wow, okay, so that's a pretty messy looking thing. Okay, well, let's see what we can do with that, though. Well, the first thing I notice is that everything has a common factor p here as well as a common factor n. So let me factor out n times p. Okay, now that's a nice thing to factor out if we look at where we're going. So what are we left with? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I'm left with what? n minus 1 factorial from this over n minus 1 factorial times, and the p is gone, so this is just going to be q to the n minus 1, or I could write p to the 0 power. Now, what about the next term? Well, I take an n out, so I'm going to have n minus 1 factorial in my numerator. My denominator is going to have n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Well, I've got a 2 there. I'll just leave that in the numerator. Let's get rid of the p here. p to the first, q to the n minus 2, etc. all the way along here. Let's see. The last term, I factor out an n. That gives me n minus 1 factorial divided by, well, 0 factorial times n factorial. And uh, I've got that uh, scalar that gets multiplied here, n. So this is p to the n minus 1 times q to the 0. Okay, let's see if I'm how much headway I'm making here. Now, uh, well, I do have some things that are going to cancel here, aren't I? So I'm going to have, uh, let's do that cancel. I can cancel this 2 with the 2 factorial. That just leaves with 1 factorial. And the next one would have 3 and 3 factorial. I cancel that. It would give me 2 factorial. And the last one here the n and the n factorial cancels and gives me n minus 1 factorial. Okay. All right. So uh, that's an interesting expression here because if I look at that and go back and remember something from high school algebra, namely the binomial theorem, then what am I really saying here? This is just really, see, this is a p to the 0 power here. Okay, this is just the expression, I forgot my brackets, that, that says this is p plus q to the n minus first power. If you expand this by the binomial theorem. But that's, that's really nice because p plus q, remember, is going to be 1. So down here, this is just going to be n times p times 1 to the n minus 1 first power, which is just n times p. So this big long mess here actually does simplify down to this very simple little expression for calculating the uh, expected value of the binomial distribution. Well, thanks for watching.